Hey guys, Christy here from The Soul Life and welcome back to our channel. So today we're going to be talking about a hot topic at De Silva Life right now, which is client management and ClickUp. Now we've worked with so many different types of clients and helping other clients serve their clients. So we know all the different types of workflows and projects and ways to really utilize ClickUp when it comes to organizing your client processes. So what we've created is an entire client management template bundle to really be able to handle all different types of client projects that come your way. From one-off projects, to retainer clients, to gathering testimonials, onboarding and offboarding your clients, and making sure that no single task slips through the cracks. Not to mention totally impressing your clients by your amazing organization, and building out an awesome client dashboard. So let's go through the different templates that are in this bundle so you can see how ClickUp really can be maximized to serve your clients. Let's talk client management in ClickUp. Now, for those of you don't, who don't know, I started as a virtual assistant before venturing into exclusively systems. So this means I was working on a retainer basis with most people. Um, and then I ventured into the system build world where now I manage projects, right? So they're one-off projects and we have recurring clients as well that we support. And so, especially with also building out all different types of workflows for our clients' clients, meaning how they manage their projects, we've gotten so much insight into how to really maximize ClickUp for different types of work. And so inside our client management template, which is linked below in the description, this is also available in our System School membership, we have mapped out both a workflow for project-based and then retainer clients as well. So I kind of want to walk you through this. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty, but more just show you how you can really structure some different ways to stay organized. Okay, so then just some quick tips here about managing a client space. So you can do this many different ways, right? But we like having folders. if. If possible, it's best to keep client projects in one list. So for example, if you're doing a website build, you can have that client just as one list and just add them to that and then have a, a folder of web build clients. Maybe you do website builds and then you do branding. So you might have a workflow template for websites and then one for branding and you would keep them separated in different folders. Whereas maybe you are a virtual assistant or a social media manager and you're managing three different platforms for a client, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. So maybe then would be where you would have a folder for that client and the three different workflows beneath. If possible, you want to try and condense as much without having too much in one list and it being cluttery, like if you have to section things out. But if you find yourself having a folder with five lists and each list has five tasks, realistically, you can condense it. So I wanted to give that tip as well when it comes to client management before we dive into actually going through what these different pieces look like. Okay, so starting off with project-based clients, this is actually our workflow mapping template. And this is the exact format we use for our projects for our clients. So here you can see on this main list view, we have a list that's grouped by phases. So a lot of times it's just easily, it's more easy visually to see things mapped out in phases and then still have statuses for every single task, right? So this is where we have a dropdown called phase and we grouped this by the custom field dropdown so that we can visually see it like this while if you click into this task and you have this on your calendar, it doesn't just say phase one, instead it actually says the status of that task. So that's actually something that 
we see often and something that I didn't know when I started was the difference between using drop down custom fields versus statuses is having a status is that's really what you want the status of that actual task to be where if there are things like phases or categories that you want to add as a drop down that's when you can venture into that custom field drop down and then you can group it by that if that's how you visually want to see it right okay so here grouped by phase then we have the client view where you can see just the status still grouped by phase or you could bring anything on the outside of this task that you want. Um, but I actually have a whole other video on our channel about um, this client view and sharing this with a client. It's a view only link so you can actually decide how much liberty and do you want to give them insight, how much insight do you want to give them into the project you get to choose. Um, then you have calendar, you have Gantt view, which this is really great when you're working with teams and agencies, um, but also for managing client expectations. So you can say, hey, say this was your task, right? Fill out client onboarding form. Well, every single piece of this project is dependent on that piece. So if you delay on this, it is going to delay our whole project. Gantt view is awesome, we love it. Um, and then you have a place for um, notes and then an onboarding form as well. So this is a really great holistic template of a project. Using this to map out one-off projects, um, also getting team members on board, having those dependencies mapped, that's what these blocking and waiting on little bubbles are here. So that's through the project-based clients, right? Now let's go through retainer. So this is where, again, you have those same type of statuses to do in progress review needs edits approved complete, whether or not you want to add your client to this, or you just want to have this internally for yourself. That's totally up to you. You can also create automations like say when the status moves to review, if your client was added to this list, it could then assign your client with a due date of one or two days later. Those are really great automations to have running in here. So right, say we have this task list. Okay, this retainer client, here are all the things we do for them. But then what if you manage a couple different things for them? So you do their customer service, you make some social media graphics, you publish their blog posts, whatever it may be. Well, that's where, again, we can have this category drop down, just like the phases. We created a drop down and I'll show you where that is. And you can name these categories whatever you want. And then I'll hide this and then group it by that custom field category. Um, and then you can have a chat in here as well with your client and an onboarding doc. This is our onboarding doc template. This is actually a freebie. If you go to disillalife.com slash freebies, you can access this. Um, and you can have everything in one place, right? So you come to this client's list, you have all the tasks you do for them, a chat where you're communicating, their documents with all their logins and branding information, everything like that in one place. That's the beauty of ClickUp. Um, then we have a client task list. So in here we have onboarding and offboarding checklist, one-off system setup. So you can see just like mapping out standard things for onboarding a client, right? So you can have this as a rinse and repeat every time you onboard a client, having this here. And people might be like, well, if I have their tasks in their list, why is there a client task list? Couple different reasons here. Number one, it could be a general client task list. So send Christmas gifts, right? Or it could be something that maybe you don't necessarily want them to see if they're added to their list. So it would be like, talk with client about price increase, right? So it's just great in each of these spaces that you have to have one task list related to that space that you can kind of just drop anything and not have to think about it. Obviously not getting it cluttered or getting in that habit of it, but just having a dedicated space to put something. If you ever have the thought, where should I put this? Um, then you need to make space for it and you need to clean up the process and the system a little bit. Okay, so that is a client task. Two more things. You have a client database. So this is where we have past client active onboarding. And again, you could have onboarding, offboarding, 
and then have those task lists triggering in here as well. I put it in two different places depending on what people want. Custom fields to see company name, email address, services purchased, total spend, contract start. Just having one master place for all of your clients at a glance. Now we use a CRM HoneyBook as well. This has all of our clients in there, but sometimes having just a nice ClickUp list and database is really just soothing visually for the brain. If you couldn't tell, I am all about visuals and uh, I love having things super clean and organized, hence why I love ClickUp. Um, okay, so client database and then testimonials, right? So we have a happiness survey. So in here you can see we created a form view where you can gather your testimonials, put anything on here that you want, and then it comes in, you can decide, do you wanna share this on social, don't share, share it on social, having the different things here, asking them for their permission. And then you can also create an automation that when the task is created from a form, meaning the testimonial form is filled out, you can add yourself as an assignee with the due date, or you can even add a subtask that says review new testimonial from task name, and then that would be the client. And then you can go in here and see what their testimonial was. Um, so that is it for our client management tutorial, just showing you some ways that you can manage and organize your client details in here. Obviously, this is a template, right? So every single person's process is different, the way they um, handle their clients, the way their project flows. So this is just really to give you some inspiration, but if you love the way things were laid out in here and it would be super helpful for you to just plug in this entire thing, as is like i just showed you and then work from there again it is available in our membership and at the link in the description below so i hope this video was helpful for you so i hope that video was helpful for you and gave you a little bit of inspiration on how you can use your ClickUp to maximize your client journey and organize your entire client space to fit the needs of that specific project if you want to grab the client management template bundle that was featured in this video it will be linked in the description below. If you have any questions about client management or want to see any other things when it comes to ClickUp tutorials, make sure to drop a comment below and let us know. We love being able to create content that serves you, so we want to hear exactly what you're looking for. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel because there's a lot more where that came from. With that, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.